And and again, you know, being the sort of central character, it seems that, you know, Wolverine epitomizes in some way what X-Men are about, you know, that he's always central to whatever the story's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's a great part. And if you look at the comic book saga, he's always been this very popular, he was in a way the first anti-hero. And when they came out in the 60s, it was quite revolutionary X-Men because, uh, it, of course, it was about a lot of stuff. It was really an allegory of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. It always has this undertone of something important to say about those people who are marginalised, those people who are discriminated against and segregation, etc., etc. So, and it's also fun. I mean, you've got all these great characters that people love whose abilities, superhuman abilities, come out of their vulnerabilities and frailties and uh, are emotional. So it's a... It's a very clever kind of device, revolutionary at its time, and it's, it's stayed the test of time too. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why, why Brian was interested in coming back as well, mm. because there is this kind of depth and this sort of layered quality to it. I yeah. mean, what, what does it mean to you and to the film that, that Brian's there at the helm again? I think it's great. I mean, he started it. It was his vision to begin with, not just for X-Men. If you think about it, he kind of started the whole genre. Um, and... and X-Men was the first out of the gate and many, many have followed since, um, Nolan and others. So it's, uh, to have him back 11 years after doing the last one, he did produce X-Men First Class, so he's been involved. But I think to have him at the helm when we're at attempting the most ambitious, biggest, most epic version of it is completely fitting. And what about, you know, you said 11 years for him, it's 11 years for you. Right. How's your understanding of this character and your enjoyment of playing this character, how's that changed and evolved over, well, over that time? Of course I understand it better. Of course I understand it better than I used to. And I, and I also, weirdly, am enjoying it more than ever. I mean, some people have suggested to me, oh, you know, you're bored playing it. I always find him a challenge. And I enjoy being on a movie set in the last three or four years more than I have ever before. I think that kind of started when I did Real Steel back in 2010. I don't know, something clicked and I found the freedom that I used to experience on stage on a film set. And so I, I think I've grown, I'm a little older. It helps to be a little older playing Wolverine, I think, because he's, you know, who knows how old, 200 years. So it's, it's all been good. I mean, getting closer in age, is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, we're rapidly catching, I'm rapidly catching up to him, man. Uh, I'll tell you, training at four o'clock in the morning, I feel even closer to him. <laughs> oh God, I can't, I can't even imagine. But um, th th there's a third Wolverine movie for you. It says three three years away, but but you know, but all the same. Are there any are there any specific stories that you feel, or any sort of routes that you feel Wolverine could still go down? Yeah, I mean, there is many. There's so many different avenues. We're looking at all the comic books for inspiration, and I don't know exactly where. Uh, we are heading specifically Jim Mangold's already come up with a great idea which I'm not going to tell you about now and that I'm guessing will be the basis of it um, I really felt we recorrected the ship on the last one with the Wolverine and, but I still feel there's that elusive nailed it feeling you know, completely you know I, maybe I'll always feel that maybe that's the curse of the actor yeah just tenacious too tenacious for your own good maybe maybe, maybe. Um, and, and just on the sort of Marvel tip, um, are, you, are you a fan of the other Marvel films? Do you sort of mm. like check in with those other franchises that are developing mm. the whole time? Absolutely. You know, and Kevin Feige, who runs Marvel, was the assistant to Lauren Shuladonna on X-Men 1. And so it was like his first film, I think, and my first film. We actually maintained a great friendship ever since. And I think they've done a brilliant job. And Marvel have really helped extend the genre because they had a very bold plan from the beginning which I'm sure everyone kind of if they knew about it was like really this is a little ambitious to say I've got a 15 year plan but they're, they're doing it you know and they've taken bold choices in actors and filmmakers and you know and a big reason as is X-Men as to why the genre will go on I think for a long time. Mm. And what a nice man he is, isn't he, Kevin? What a nice man. The nicest guy, it's true. <laughs> no, he really is. He really is. Sorry, oh. things on the nanny. Can you get to the first question again? Yeah, is that, is that okay? Oh, sorry, Hugh. Um, sorry. It's, it's, sorry, it was just a recap on what Wolverine's doing in this film. So, is that... in the first film, sorry. So, in this film, Days of Future Past, Wolverine is now a member of the team, but there's just precious few of them left. It's like they're on the edge of extinction. 
the Sentinels are robots that have been created to kill mutants and they're doing a really good job of it. So the plan is to go back in time to prevent the beginning of the Sentinel program. And so my character is one who gets sent back and he's given a task actually which is really against his type. So it was a lot of fun playing it. Certainly the things he has to do are not in his skill set.